I'm going to try something, guys. So just hold on. Let me see if I can do it this way. Oh, yeah, I love her music. I, I so love her music. So I just sent him a friend request. So hopefully he will be able to join on one, one, one of these. <laughs> so just be patient and we'll see which one he's going to be able to connect. I like waking up to her in the morning, Tam, to hear her um, her singing. So I'm still waiting for my guest. So I've sent him a friend request. So I'm trying to see how we're going to get him on. So. Hey, cuz, how are you? So I'm still trying to see if I can get my guest on so I'm using two separate phones and if he can pop on then I'll we'll go from there yes she is amazing I love her songs I really truly love them okay um let me see if I can connect him okay so this is what's going to happen as soon as I get him on is is adding him okay <laughs> hey hold on hold on okay uh, i had to i had to um i had to go from my other phone to get you since he wouldn't let you pick up on the one that i use usually use but it's still the same it's still all good <laughs> how are you I'm doing better now since we're connected. Uh, oh yeah, well don't get frustrated. You know that's sometimes like I did miss I interviewed Miss Faye last night, and me and her been trying to get on since December. Mm hmm. <laughs> so how are you? I am doing well, cousin. I am doing absolutely well. How about good. yourself? I I'm good. And so, you know, every time I do an interview, I have a word for my guests and not only for my guests, but for my viewers. And so the word that I chose for you was redemption. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the word I chose for you. And so I'm going to read you the scripture and it says, in him, we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace. And that was Ephesians 1 and 7. And then I read, it says, it doesn't matter who we were or what we did in the past. In God's love for us, in his mercy and grace, not only has he forgiven you and me, but he has redeemed us from life of despair. Hallelujah. He has taken what was once lost and broken and transformed it into something beautiful. Most definitely. And who, you know, I tell people, who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Who, who wouldn't? It, it amazes me when people can't acknowledge that, that very truth. And right, right. I definitely and serve him. Oh, yes, yes. So tell people who you are, where you reside, and then me and you are going to just start having some dialogue because I don't want to keep you late because I know you probably had a long day. So, it, yeah, so tell people who you are, where you reside, and me and you are going to just start talking. It has been a long day, and the, the, the 15 to 20 minutes that I had you and your, your audience waiting made it a little longer. But praise God, um, yes. he allowed everything to come through, and here we are. I am Michael McLean, and I'm from Sanford, born and raised in Sanford. I now live in Clayton, North Carolina, and I am serving God in the capacity that he has allowed me to experience a life of self-imposed hell, to come out of it, to be an example to people that are still experiencing that type of lifestyle hell. And right. I am, I am just praising him through it. 
being an example of someone who has been delivered through faith and patience, persevering to understand his true strength in us. Right, right. And, you know, so since you already said, you, you know, living through all that, you know, we are brothers, children, so you're not our first cousin. Hallelujah. And and you know when we grew up we had we we had an amazing childhood you know we may not have had everything that we wanted but i definitely can't complain i can't complain but as we went our separate ways and started to do our different things when did your hell begin for you so um as you know our both our fathers passed when we were young yes and and I um I was fortunate enough to have the stern hand of a father that really put the fear of God in me to stray down the road that I strayed when he was no longer around. Right. Um James McLean, a brilliant, brilliant man, um, instilled in me who I am today. Right. And and trust me, um the things that he forbade me to do as soon as he was not around it was like the enemy came in and, and, and grabbed me and pulled me in those directions now right. i'm not i'm not giving i'm not giving those slew footed um any glory for what he did because right. i made the choice of my own knowing full well what the difference between right and wrong because i was raised right. um but i would say when my father passed when i was 13 i had began to go to spiral down a road of irresponsibility mm -hmm. and and loss of self-control um not only not only did drugs not only did all types of substances take me in that direction but a lust for females also did it as well um right, right. but it began around 12 13 13 wow. or 14. And, you know, and it's amazing, you grow up around your family, and when you look back, you you never know the struggles that they had or what was waiting for them. Because I guess when you're so young, you just think, well, we're young, we just still going about our lives. And so when you start to spiral down, did it really was it really the path that you wanted to take or is it, did it have, you know, losing your father that caused you to do that? Or was it something in you that you decide, well, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do now that he's not here. There, there were a number of um, events that happened in my life as a child that kind of led me to, to, to develop a give up mindset. And, right. and one of those, the 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 main event was watching my father deal with racism mm -hmm. and and then um experience the same things he would come home crying and complaining about and when i right. when i say when i say crying um some people in this world today think a man is weak when he shed tears but i don't mean that this man was crying from a point of weakness Right. He was crying. He was crying from a point of strength, knowing how brilliant he was, but working a position where he would give somebody else strength by helping them with their with with their work. Um, he worked as a proofreader at the Sanford Herald, and um, he helped a lot of people with their articles. And he watched those people rise in employment as he continued to stay in the proofreading room. Um, my father developed in me uh, a, a belief that no matter how hard you try, no matter how smart you were, that the way society was at that time, you mm -hmm. were not gonna get ahead. Um, right. we, we truly was a black sheep. And I felt that we really didn't belong here because we were, we were not welcome here. This uh, right. mindset was, was strengthened um, in elementary school when uh, a number of teachers um, 
stress some racist ideals that that set with me but right. i really experienced this when i when i began to work and to put in my best effort for and not to be rewarded and to see the reward go in right. other directions where i didn't feel like they they worked as hard as i did right it just it just it just led me to a give up mindset um um that basically was the premise of me turning to escapism and mm -hmm. and, and 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 i call addiction escapism because in my opinion from mm -hmm. maturing and becoming mm -hmm. the man that I am today, I realized right. that I just gave up and I developed a forget it mindset and I escaped. I did, I did what I could do up until the point where the, the escape lifestyle um, overcame me and, and, and I just gave into it. And so when you say you gave into it, you just said, well, I already have this mindset, so I might as well just go ahead and just fall deeper into it. Well, yes. I mean, it was the escapism that I'm referring to, of course, is addiction. And if 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 you don't know anything about an addiction, it will right. become your number one concern. And and when it's your number one concern and developing a mindset of low self-esteem, mm -hmm. not feeling like you have a way out, not feeling like that all the all the good effort and or talent or ability that you have can lead you out would just have you spiral further and further down that rabbit hole of addiction. And I unfortunately spent a great deal of my life spiraling down that rabbit hole. And as you were spiraling down at any point did you say i know better i was raised better i want to do better but as you said escaping was that easier at the time versus trying to see if you can move to where you are today but during this um escaping period of your life did there ever come a point where michael said I have value. I have worth. So there were there were plenty instance instances in my life where I I noticed value in myself. Um, I I I want everybody to understand that I'm not blaming that lifestyle and those choices on on, on racism. I'm not blaming right. all of that on somebody outside myself. Like I said, right. I was raised. I know right from wrong. Exactly. I was lazy. I was lazy. I made poor choices. I made poor decisions. And I took the easy way out instead of persevering and pushing through the racism, pushing through any, any other hard times that I faced, especially those that were self-created. Um, I, got, I got to a point to where I didn't understand the situation that I got myself into. I mean, I was a, I was a, I was a father of four kids, four children that I loved at the age of 19 and wow. at trying to work a job making 40, 425 an hour and bring it home $80 a week. At that time, I couldn't understand that I was doing something to take care of my children. All I could see was how am I going to survive on $80 a week? Right, so, right. So, so, so a company with the other things that I just described, I gave up. Mm -hmm. I really gave up and, and I fell deeper and deeper into addiction. Um, I, I just don't, I just know that I was the person that led myself there. Right. And eventually I had to figure out how to get myself out of that. Um, and that's where I made the mistake. But do and, you think, because that's powerful when you can admit that you made these mistakes, but a lot of people that have, addictions or whatever do do you feel that it's easy for them to blame others because clearly you already said you 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 take all the accountability blaming others blaming others is really easy and um i am guilty of that 
Um, I put the blame on my mother uh, for a great deal of my young adult, adult, adult life and a lot of other situations that happened that baffled me and confused me. Um, but you got to understand that I was, I was depending on human beings. I was depending right. on myself. And, right. and when, we, when we are unaware of actually what's going on around us, what's going on with inside of us, mm -hmm. we have to figure out what's going on in a spiritual way to battle this. And, yes. and until I gained that knowledge or gained that understanding, I was, I was led around like, like, um, like somebody just dragging my ear or, or earring wow. in my nose and just pulling me by the waves of the wind. And I had to figure out how to change it. I couldn't do and, it on my own. And what was your pivoting point? Because I don't know how long you stayed into your escapism. How, how, how long did you stay in that state before you made up in your mind that you wanted better, you saw better, you needed better? So there were several pivoting points. I mean, I managed to, to, to gain sobriety quite a few times in my life, but there's, there's two points that are very important and I learned from them. Mm -hmm. um, my first significant stint of sobriety came um, in March 29th, 1996. Mm -hmm. um, to be quite frank with you, I was purchasing some, some drugs over in Oakwood and the, mm -hmm. the young kid that I was purchasing the drugs from told me about my 12 year old daughter, how wow. beautiful she was. And he just found out that she was my daughter and that he was going to be my son-in-law. It woke me up. The wow. next day, I went and got help. And by the grace mm -hmm. of God, I managed to um, stay clean and sober for um, six, six years. Wow. That's amazing. So, so what I learned from that was I didn't do it for myself. Mm -hmm. I did it for my daughters. Right. right. I did it for my son. Right. And, and that 12 year old daughter and those other children and son, they have lives of their own. When I yeah. got clean, I got clean looking at them as I was going to renew me. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work like that. They have their no. own personalities. They have their own character. And right. I didn't understand at the time that they wouldn't do what I wanted them to do because I knew the right way for them to go. Right. And right. And when they fail in certain ways that we as humans do, especially yes. at teenagers, yes, I blamed myself. Wow. And I gave up. Now, now, now you got to remember that person can't be the foundation of your success. They can't yes. be the foundation of your determination to do better. They can't Amen. be the foundation of you moving forward. Amen. Because we're all human. We're, We're all, all fallible. Human. We yeah. all are going to eventually hurt somebody. Amen. Amen. And, un and unknowingly, my beautiful children hurt this father because I was not accepting them as individual people. I was right. looking at them as little Michaels. Right, right. <laughs> and that's so, real talk. Yes, yeah. yes. So, so with that, that first six years of sobriety, I got clean. Now, now, please don't, don't think that I am saying that I relapsed and went back to using because of my children, because that is just not the case. But Amen. that was, but that was a weight on me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, from 96 to 2002, um, I managed to accomplish a great deal. And I also learned through that, um, through that six years of sobriety that I had gained a skill and a talent through my active addiction that allowed me to progress in, in an area of employment that I probably wouldn't have gained if I hadn't experienced that, wow. that, that negative lifestyle. And what right. I mean is that, now don't get me wrong, I, 
I have a father that had the gift of gab, and I witnessed him do a lot of things with his mouth, his finesse, his charm. And, yeah. and I'm not saying that that only came from addiction, but I will say that the boldness of, of a lifestyle of escapism brought that out of me. Right. And, and it allowed a, a business owner in Sanford to give me a chance. Now, is that when you was working in home health? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I, in, in 96, um, when, uh, when this happened over in Oakwood and that next day I decided to go get some help. Mm -hmm. Um, I ended up at a treatment center and, and I stayed there for a week and came back and got a job at Hardy's. Um, I think is now that I don't know the name uh, of it, <laughs> but alpaca. It, alpaca, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I worked there, I guess I had been working there for about a month, and, and, and my little brother at the time, he was 12, 13, maybe 14 mm -hmm. years old, and I heard him one Saturday morning crying about mom not being able to afford him some Jordans or some type of shoes that all of his friends got, and he right. said, he said, but they got them, they got them, and, and she said, and she she heard who the friends were, and well, she heard who the guys were, and she knew how they how they earned the money. So he right, said, "I need right. to start doing that too." And I heard it, and I got up because that that was not a road that I wanted him to even entertain exactly. or go down. So exactly. I told him to put on some clothes and some and some dirty shoes because I'm getting ready to go show him how to go earn his money for these shoes. Absolutely. Now, now Donna, um, during that time, I mean. I, I think I've been back in Sanford ripping and running the streets from like 92 to 90 mm -hmm. till I got clean in 96. I've been clean right. maybe two, I've been clean a month, a month and a half. And mm -hmm. understand, I, I hustled to support my habit. In the, right. in the daytime, I did yard work. At nighttime, I panhandled, okay? Right. Right. So, so, and I'm not saying this with a pride, but I'm oh, saying no, this you, you, you give people you letting people know the truth because that's what this is about because your story truly a redemption and just like everybody Hallelujah. else to be on this platform even me we have been redeemed from whatever we've been in yes yes you know? yes just claiming and moving that direction and thank him yeah. for it every chance you get like it's yes. already happening already happened hallelujah mm. but I, I i made go ahead and, and you know to see you now it's amazing because i we left that a period of time you know my temporary year so i didn't get to see all this about you but god is so good to have kept you and i always tell people if he kept you while you was in your mess and even when we're in the gutter or the lowest of the low he is still down there saying i'm with you i'm just waiting for you and and i ask why do we not want to serve him because he could have took us out a long time ago because like you said, you was in your mess, I was in my mess. We may not been doing the same thing, but sin is sin. And he kept us going to the club, getting shot, you know, at when people shooting, you know, in the Shangri-La and all these places that we were going. But yet and still, his grace and mercy was still on our lives because he was saying, they're going to get it together one day. They're going to be great one day. They're going to serve me one day. Hallelujah. And that's what he did for you. And that's why I chose that word redemption because it's just only by his grace and mercy that you and I are both here. True. And it's, it's so powerful when you can say, I did this. Yes, I did. But that wasn't the end. And so as you're going through all these treatments, how many times did you... You know, for well, you had a period of time that you stayed clean, but then when you relapsed, how long did you stay out again? Seven years. Wow. 2003 um, to 2010. Wow. Yeah, and so what was the final straw for you? 
What was the final straw for Michael? Um, that stint uh, between 2009 and 2010, I I had learned a lot, and 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 I don't I, I can't remember where I learned this from, mm -hmm. but I got saved at 12 years old. Okay, wow. um, not knowing what it was, not knowing what it meant. Right. All I know, all I know is I got saved. Mm -hmm. Over over the years, um, I I had started started to build a relationship with Jesus, but not understanding the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, about I guess it was June the twenty sixth of twenty ten was the day of reckoning, and and um, about three weeks before that. I started pulling out the Bible, reading mm -hmm. the Bible as mm -hmm. I was getting high. And, and I don't know why I started doing it, but I do know that I was tired. I do right. know that I did not know how to stop mm -hmm. um, getting up every morning or, or getting up, going to get that fix that I needed to get going, mm -hmm. staying up for three to seven days, falling out, waking up doing it all over again i was sick and tired of that and wow. i felt it in my spirit that the only way that i was going to get well was to bring god into the situation with me yes yes and and, and if, if 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 you don't know this yet when the enemy thinks he has you mm -hmm. and you start to pull god into the situation actively pull him in Mm -hmm. The enemy is going to do everything he can Every, yes, yes, to get that away from him, okay? Mm -hmm. So the last morning that I was using, the enemy used my friend to chase me with a knife. Jesus. And that, I could hear that knife whistling by my head mm. and, hitting the, and hitting the cinder block walled hallways in Simmons Building. Mm. Um, when that was over with, I went to the courtyard in Simmons building and I sat there just for a second, looked up to the sky and dropped to my knees and screamed out, father, if you can get me somewhere where I can learn how to live life without this substance, I will mm -hmm. definitely praise you and worship you and do everything I can to lift you up in the lives of people for the rest of my life. That was a Sunday morning. Excuse me, that was a Saturday morning. Okay. Um, the neighbor came from across the street. Hey, sissy, if you out there. And she helped me. She called my mother and my aunt. And they took me to um, Raleigh. I told them to drop me off at the bus station so I can get the price of a ticket. And I got the price of a ticket for Charlotte and Wilmington. And I caught the bus. I panhandled the money for the bus and, and went and um, went out towards Capitol, went out Capitol Boulevard towards the Triangle mm -hmm. Mall and started hustling $90 to get a bus ticket to either Charlotte or Wilmington. Um, while I was out there, I ran into our cousin Seal, mm -hmm. and Seal told me that he sees something changing in me. Okay, I talked about this at his funeral, but um, that I, I, I hustled the money. I went. I got back downtown. I bought a bus ticket to Wilmington because it was the next bus leaving. Although mm -hmm. I had to wait there, I had to sleep there all night, mm -hmm. and. I ended up in Wilmington and to give to to give your audience a synopsis of how good God is cuz there's a lot I can tell in between this of, of God showing up but well, on that strong. Wednesday on that Wednesday I, mm -hmm. I I got to Wilmington that Sunday I ended up in a shelter the Salvation Army mm -hmm. and Monday I went and looked for a job Tuesday I went and looked for a job Wednesday I gave up and I developed mm -hmm. the mindset I had Saturday, excuse me, Friday. And 
I felt like doing something lazy. I went and applied for social security. And as I was, as I was applying for social security, a brother walked by the lady that was interviewing me and we made eye contact and I felt something jump in my stomach. Mm. Uh, about five minutes later, he walked back by the other way. We made eye contact again and I felt the Holy Spirit jump in my stomach. Wow. Okay? This was a Wednesday. So I left there. I went looking for a job again and went and checked on some applications that I filled out on Monday and Tuesday and got an interview. Okay. Went back to the Salvation Army. It's probably four or five, probably five thirty, six o'clock. I was sitting on a bunk reading um, Daniel. And, and the announcement of a Bible study came over the um, loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm telling myself, I'm not going to this. I'm studying the Bible. I don't need to go. And then I, I felt the Holy Spirit nudge me and say, grab your Bible, go to mm. this Bible study. And guess who was leading the Bible study? Steel. That man that walked by me at Social Security, and I wow. felt the Holy Spirit jump in my stomach. So after the Bible study, he invited who all wanted to come to his church on that Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay. I went to his church on Sunday, and after service, powerful service, after service, he, he baptized me in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of prophecy and speaking in tongues. Now, I, I didn't know what was going on. And, 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 and I did what he, what he asked me to do. I repeated after him. And he told mm -hmm. me, I know this sounds crazy. I know you feel crazy doing it. But I'm mm -hmm. telling you, if you do this every day, you will right. awaken the spirit of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Mm -hmm. And what you asked him for, you will experience. So wow. I remember what I asked God for mm -hmm. that Sunday, that Saturday, that Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, every day I practice my tongue. I practice my prayer language. Okay. Every day. Um, this was in July. It was actually July the 4th, 2010. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it was in February of 2011. I had moved out the shelter. I had my own place. I had a vehicle and I was working at that same shelter uh, wow. doing maintenance. I was outside of that shelter, cleaning that yard, getting ready to cut the grass. And, um, I picked up a Pyrex marijuana bowl, which is what I smoked my drugs out of. Right, right. Instantly, instantly. Mm -hmm. I hadn't felt this since that Friday or that Saturday morning in late June of 2010. Instantly, mm -hmm. I felt that old man rise up in me Jesus. and say, you've been clean for six or seven months. Why don't you just hide this somewhere? At least right, you don't have to spend right. no 25 or $30 for when you relapse and you just come back and get it. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, shokono mahalasiki de and I seen a spirit run out of my left eye. Mm. And I have not had a desire to use drugs since. And you know, and that just shows you. She you got on your knees that day at Simmons in the courtyard. God knew you were sincere from your heart. Hallelujah. He knew you were sincere from your heart because when you get desperate, hallelujah, when you get desperate enough, you can't tell me he won't step in immediately. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. You can't tell me, but you have to get tired of being sick and tired. And it doesn't matter what we're in, whatever. I may not be into drugs. I may be into something else. But when we get sick and tired of being sick and tired and we get on our knees and we call out to the Father, he will come and see about his children. But it's, yes. it's here. It's yes. here. Yes. Because when it's here, we won't turn back. Because up here, I might have tell you, just like you just said, your mind was like, go ahead, do it. Nobody's going to know. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Father. But I'm telling you, when I see you, 
I have a love for you. And you, you and I always had a connection. But seeing how God has been good to you, show grace and mercy, you don't even look like what you've been through. Hallelujah. You don't even look like what you've been through. Hallelujah. And that's why I wanted you to be on this platform because we have people struggling with addictions. It may be alcohol. It may be whatever. But you are an example of if you trust the Father, he can do whatever. But he's waiting for us. Did at any point, did you just say, just maybe? Just maybe if I just smoke this, you know, and just hide it. No, I, 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 I've, I've, not, I've not thought about doing drugs since. Now, now don't get me wrong. Um, it, was, it was probably about a year later before I actually put the cigarettes down. Mm -hmm. But I haven't had a, a drink or a drug since June twenty fifth of twenty ten. Wow. And 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 the thought of it, the thought of using. Let 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 let, let me just let me just go back just a little bit. Here's here's what go the ahead. thought of using is to me. Go ahead. Um. In in two thousand and two. My, my, my oldest daughter, that 12 year old I was telling y'all about mm -hmm. was living with me and I had relapsed. Nobody knew. I, I hadn't relapsed on drugs yet, but I, I, uh, on Fridays I would go get a half a, a half a gallon of liquor on one of my runs. I live right beside the, the store and I would take it home. But this particular Friday I was sitting there not expecting my daughter to walk in the door. And I was sitting there looking at a half gallon of liquor. And I just poured me a drink and she walked in the door and that look, that look that was on her face. Yeah. I remember it today. Mm. I remember it today. And not just, not just remembering that keeps me clean, but knowing, knowing who I am today versus Amen who I was when I was sitting in that chair and she walked in that door. Amen. Now, now don't get me wrong. There, there are a lot of situations with my children that I have remind myself of the right. consequences of relapse. I remind myself of going backwards and losing. So, so no cousin, I, uh, I, I, um, I, I truly wrestle with, the, the the question of, of 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 me Michael McLean being an addict, I, I I can't claim anything like that because I know who my father is. Amen. I know <laughs> I know what's inside of me. I know the King that I am. I yeah. know that I laid myself down and allowed slew footed to take over this. Yes. I allowed a yes. plant to control my thought patterns yes. To, to, yes. to to just lead me around. <laughs> Like a like an earring in my nose being pulled by his dirty wings. No, yes. not again today. I, I take authority. Yes. I take authority over the yes. direction that this life moves in. Amen. But I understand today that this life is the only life that I can take authority over at this it, point. Uh, now I can leave. Amazing how when you get to that point, people can't hold all that other mess. That old person that that they want to you know remember. Hallelujah. Because when we give ourselves to Him, we knew. People might say, "Girl, don't you?" Well, you know what? She used to live there, but her resident is has inspired. She's been evicted. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. She's Hallelujah. Been evicted. And just like with you, they can say, "Oh yeah, I remember when." Hey, that old Michael, he done been evicted. He got his papers. So now here we are. And you just, I, I love seeing you when I, when you would be in your car giving your testimonies and stuff and talking and stuff. And I'm just like, wow, won't he do it? Won't he do it? And cause I'm gonna tell you what, I wouldn't trade being on this side for nothing in the world, nothing. 
Nothing. And Nothing. you know, we, we thought we had it going on when we was out there, but to be on this time, <clears throat> we really got it going on. Hallelujah. Definitely. We really got Definitely. it going on. And I love seeing how you have your relationships with your children has evolved. Your relationship with your grandchildren has evolved. That's, nobody can do that but God. And that's why I chose redemption. Because you only know your struggles, but one thing I know for sure, and I will bet anything on it, when you fell on your knees that night and you said, here I am, he showed up and he has been showing out in your life ever since then. He definitely has. And I'm just so, I'm just so proud of who you are. So proud of who you are. I've always loved you, never judged, because who are we to judge? Because we've been in our own mess. I've been in my own mess. But I truly love who you are, especially who you are in Christ. Um, Dion said, much love. Much love to you too, my brother. <laughs> Definitely. But so do you minister to other young people or even older people that have struggled with addictions? So um, I definitely have been blessed. And one of, the, one of the, the tools that I use with everybody that I come into contact with, whether it's on my job um, or in the street, is no matter whether you're using no matter whether you're selling that's an experience that can be flipped around to do good for those people still struggling with that yeah um the 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 dealers that i that i that i counsel um now i try to instill in them the experience that they have gained through that lifestyle to start them a business and and use those skills to incorporate and grow that business the, right. the 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 person the people that are caught up with their form of escapism um i i i, I try I, I i try to help them get to the root cause of it and mm -hmm. understand what it is that they don't want to face that they feel like right. they need to take right. a substance to keep continually covering it up and yes. experiencing the same negative consequences right and right and and, and 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 in 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 circumstances where I can use my past experiences, mm -hmm. I tell them who I am. Right. I tell them where God has delivered me from. Those right. who do not believe, I come at them in, in, in a way where they can receive the fact that you know you have a strength, you have an ability. I mean. It's not it's not easy to hustle two, three hundred dollars a day to do your drugs, okay? Right, right. Um, you can tap into that and do something legitimately. Yes, if it's nothing yes. but going to school and honing that craft, and I ain't talking about a two year or four year degree, go get you go get you a, a plumbing certificate, go get you yes. a, 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 a a carpenter's um, yes, certificate. Yes. Do something to where you can build some type of value in yourself. And and trust and me, cousin. When I do things like that, it, it, it just empowers the Holy Spirit living inside of me. It yes, just strengthens, yes. it just strengthens and encourages the reasons that life was like it was before mm -hmm. I got myself together. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and when I say got myself together, I got myself together many a times, but mm -hmm. I didn't know mm -hmm. how to do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to maintain it. Right. Right. God, God is yes. the knower. He yes. sends us his yes. spirit to comfort us yes. and to show us all yes. things, not to not to condemn us, but to convict yes. us in yes. a way yes. that pricks us towards doing it right. We're Amen. never going to get it always right. We're not Jesus. No, no. You're but, right. <laughs> but you can best believe he leads yes. us in a way that yes. just encourages us to just keep seeking to be more like Jesus. So yes. Um, and I know I, I, Uncle James will be so proud of who you have become. He is. You know, I, I, I feel him about, smiling now. 
And I think about my daddy, because you know I was a daddy's girl. And, Most definitely. And you know, and I always think about, wow, what would he say to me right now? You know, you know, because our fathers were brilliant men, like you said. They they and you know, my dad could fix a car with his eyes closed. Yes. <laughs> I wish he was here right now. <laughs> Look, you and me both, when I have fun. I wish he was here right now. James got some issues going on right now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it's just the beauty when we can love each other on this side. <clears throat> yes. And I am just, I, I see you, you're happy, you look good. You look really, really good. And that's what I said. You always been fine now. You know, you everybody knew Michael McClain. But isn't it amazing how when we're in our mess, how he still preserve us? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yes. I, 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 I'm telling you, even in our mess, he still preserve us. For such a time as this. So when we tell people our story and our testimonies, they can say, wow, you went through all this and you still look like this. And I tell people, when we come on this side, we get so holy than thou. We don't want to tell people our struggles and, you know, life challenges because, you know, people may frown upon you. But when he has delivered you, saved you, given you grace and mercy, and you want to hold back what he's delivered you from, maybe, just maybe, that may help someone else. Exactly. It may, he may not deliver them and take them how he took us through our challenges. But he can bring you out unscathed, still in our right mind. But we get too uppity. We don't, we don't want to um, let people know that, hey, we ain't always been like this. We ain't always been like this. Hallelujah. You know, we ain't always Hallelujah. been to travel and go places we want to go but God. Hallelujah. And I just thank God that he came into your life at a point where you needed him. Because we've always needed him, but sometimes we have to come through a breaking point in order for him to save us. And that night when your friend was chasing you, your homie, person that you trusted, but see, when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he don't care who he uses. Because when he knows that we have purpose, that's when he comes at us even the more. And that's why I know, because for a shadow of a doubt, if I step out of the wings of God, Satan would take me out. Praise God. But we have to stay connected. And that's what I was telling people last night. When we stay connected like this, God will keep us. But as soon as we start separating, that gives Satan a chance to come in at any time he wants to. But I am so thankful to just call you my cousin, call you just family. And we just have to keep praying and interceding on our families, both sides. That whatever they're dealing with, God can save them. But I always say you have to make up your mind and your heart because it's a heart thing with him. Because that's why he said we have to renew our mind daily. But with him, it's a heart, it's a heart thing. And when we get this heart right, he said, okay, she's ready. Like a child. Yes. And just like that night, you fell on your knees. It was a heart thing. And you said, I'm ready. And he knew Michael was ready. He knew. And I'm thankful that you knew. Hallelujah. You knew. Because people, you know, I was saying in Sanford to Miss Faye last night, I said, it grieves me that our little hometown 
how so many young adults are ODing on these drugs. And I asked her, I said, what happened to us when we used to be family, discipline each other's children, and you're not mad at me because I'm disciplining your child and telling them, don't do that. But we have to, we have to wake up and get out of self. And when we see our youth doing wrong, we have to say, y'all know that's not right. Instead of being like, oh, well, they ain't my problem. Yes, it is our problem. And so now that you're here, how has your relationship been repaired with your children? Did you have to go back and ask for forgiveness for the wrong that you've done for being absent for so many years? Well, the thing, the thing with my children is that <clears throat> when my daughter was 12 and I got clean, my, my whole intention, I mean, I have, at that time, I had five kids that were in four different households. Right. And my whole intention was to make sure that they knew and loved one another as if though they were was raised in the same household. Right, right. So everything was about them from from 1996 to 2003. Right. Well, I, I have to say 2002 because that's when the relapse happened. It was right. about them, and, and 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 no woman, no woman came in the picture to where they they superseded what was what was in my my heart and mind first and foremost right. about them girls and my son. It, it that was it, um, right. so so I truly believe I accomplished what I set out to do. I truly believe that they love one another, just like they were raised in the same household. Right. Um, as far as my children and in our relationship today, of course they love me. I'm their dad, and they know yeah. I love them. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but I I I learned from that relapse of close to seven years clean that I have to let my children be their, be themselves and exactly. make their own decisions. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I had to step back because if I'm not happy with your decisions, I tend to try and put an iron fist on it and they're not having that because they're me. <laughs> they're me. You're not going to tell me what to do at that age. The only person going to tell right. me what to do is, is, is that humbled person you yes. see in front of me now but yes. but but 20 years ago all the uncles in the world try to tell me and i'm like well let me experience it myself okay <laughs> all the aunties in the world try to tell me this girl that girl you're gonna pay for this yeah, yeah but let me experience it myself and that's my children so yeah. i had to learn that and and i had to take a step back now right. don't get me wrong I am here. I am here for my babies and will always be here for them. But to protect my heart, I had to take a step back. Okay. Yes. And because yes. they, they grown and they're gonna do what they they're gonna do what yes. they're gonna do. I, um my my baby girl said something to me, I think um in 2013, 2014, I came up here to Raleigh or to see her in school or or was on my way to see her. Uh -huh. and, she, and she said something to me that caught me off guard and said, please don't tell my mama. And my heart dropped. I'm, like, I'm thinking that she's, she's studying and, oh, look, well, never mind. But, but that's my heart. That's my baby. And that's right. me. That's what I was doing. And, and Clara, even the James that stepped up out of the grave couldn't stop me from doing what I was doing at 20, 22 years old. Okay? And, and, and you know it. And you know it. Exactly. 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 But, um, but but I my children are very important to me, and and, and I and, tell, and and I like their relationship because you can see they do have a close relationship, and I like seeing that. And so you have done exactly what you wanted to do, and that you set out to do, and that's amazing. That that's amazing because you a lot of people can't say that, and that's real talk. A lot of people can't say that. Well, well, I have done what I have set out to do, and I, I've seen it come to fruition. Currently, there are some issues with my children right now that I that I am I am 
deeply pained by. But it's going to be all right. It's going to work yes, out. It will be. Yes, it will. It's going to work out. It will be. And so what what is Michael doing now? What where are you at now? So I, so God go ahead. <laughs> so I don't know. I saw a post, but I was like, I ain't gonna comment on to you because I was gonna ask you. So because at first when I saw y'all, you and your um your beautiful um lady, I saw y'all went on a trip and I was like, did they get married or what? So and then I saw your post. So is it upcoming or it's already done? So, so we've been in this relationship for, it'll be nine years. Um, I guess officially probably in, in, in August, it'll be nine years. And we're at a crossroads. And, and the reason that I say that we're at a crossroads is because um, we've never said you and I tonight have never said how long I was um, struggling with my escapism, but it was for so many years that I'm not at the maturity level of a 54 year old man, which I am. I mean, I, I, right. I was out there in the street for 20 plus years, right. close, to, right. close to 30. So my maturity level is probably hitting around 40, 42 years old. Whereas, whereas the maturity level of the lady that I am so, so much in love with is yeah. a, is a, is at 60, 60. and she's done and accomplished things that I am still working on, and it's a right. strain and stress on our relationship, right. especially right. when she has dealt with these strain and stresses in previous relationships that have hurt her. Right, so, right. so we're we're in an exploratory stage right now, and we're giving our relationship to the end of the year, and we're gonna make a decision at the end Amen. of the year whether to get. Amen. Amen. I don't know. He froze up. So, as you can see, we've been having some honest, open, transparent talk with Michael McClain, which is my cousin. And guys, please go back and share this video. This has been a true testimony of redemption from addictions up until now. And God is so amazing and he can do extraordinary things. And we just have to trust him. We just have to trust him. No matter what it looks like, no matter what we go through, no matter what we've been through, we can't, we can't stay there. We have to take ownership of whatever we've been through. We have to take ownership of, of our hiccups, mess ups, whatever you want to call it, ups. We have to take accountability for those things. And when we can do that and really truly give it to Christ from the heart, then he can do what you see him do in Michael's life, in my life, and maybe even your life, the viewers that's watching. So I am going to... Um, I don't know if I can, I'm going to try to um, bring him back on to see if him and I can continue this interview. So just hold on. If I'm going to see if I can to bring him back on because he froze up. But yeah, but God is awesome. He can do whatever he wants to do in our lives, but we have to trust him. We have to trust to know that, you know what? I'm tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when we're tired of being sick and tired, he can do whatever he wants to do with us. He can do whatever he wants to do in our lives. So, so, but that is awesome that you and her can come to a consensus to say, if it doesn't work, you can part. Because a lot of times we just stay and try to figure it out, try to make it work. You know, are you, can you hear me? Are you there? Can you hear me? Mm -mm, I can't hear you. Mm -mm. I can't hear you. So we're trying to, we got some technical difficulties going on, but guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just tuning in. With hot topics with Donna. Um, I have so enjoyed my interview with my cousin Michael McLean. 
and um, hopefully he'll get back in to give his last, um, you know, can you hear me? I don't know why our volume is um, messing up. Can you hear me though? Okay. So, but thank you, thank you, thank you um, for tuning in. And I hope you guys go back and play this and just hear the redemption of Christ from all he's been through. And I'm going to try to see if I can get him on one more time so he can, so he can um, tell us good night. But in the event that I can't, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Hot Topics with Donna. <clears throat> and I may not can bring him back on, but if I can't, because I love you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming on, telling your story, telling your truth, and being honest, open, and transparent about being at a place of escape, escapism to a place of redemption. And that truly shows that God does not have a respect of person. All he wants us to do is be a willing vessel to say we want to change, that we need to change. And he can do that. He he can totally, oops, sorry guys, he can totally do that. <clears throat> so Michael, if you can still hear me, can you just type um, in good night, if not, we're going to close it out. But once again, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Hot Topics with Donna, where I was interviewing um, my wonderful cousin, Michael McClain. So until then, I say good night. I love you. Good night, cuz. I love you. I will call you tomorrow. We'll chit chat before the weekend is out. Thank you. I love you. God bless you. Continue to stay strong stay grounded and rooted in the word and with that being said guys i love you share the video go back and watch the replay if you um just coming on but this has been a powerful a powerful story of a man that god showed grace and mercy on and he would do that for us i love you too he would do that for us not just for michael not just for donna but for all of us that is willing to say I'm ready, but we have to get to that point. So until then, I love you guys. Stay safe, love yourself, treat each other kind. And with that being said, I am your host, Donna Taylor with Hot Topics with Donna, where we interview ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Good night.